Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to Rogue System. Today we're going to take a little look at the fixed weapons on the Fire Arc Shuttle. These are uh, in the form of two railguns. Uh, the content of this video will ape what you will find in Tutorial 6 in the game itself. So, the first thing that we're going to cover in this tutorial is the weapons management system. Now that's this panel here on the rear of the right hand console. Starting from the top, we have buttons that allow us to control the capacitor. Now, this panel has uh, controls for your weapons, your capacitors and the tracking computer. Uh, the ship can be fitted with more than one capacitor. In our case we only have the one, as you can see from this uh, little rotary. And this button at the top allows us to enable or disable uh, a selected capacitor. So I've just turned on capacitor 1. We've got two further buttons that allow us to control how the capacitor is used. We have the capacitor isolator. By enabling this, we disconnect the capacitor from the weapons. We don't allow the weapons to draw energy from it. And we also have this button that says uh, weapons capacitor discharge. Now this actually connects the uh, capacitor back to the ECS and allows us to draw energy from it as if it was a battery. So in emergency circumstances, you could enable the isolator and then enable capacitor discharge and actually use it to provide a little bit of power to your ship until you empty it, of course. So anyway, for our current purposes, we're going to turn the isolation back off again. Okay, we also have buttons at the bottom here that allow us to control our weapons. We currently have two railguns fitted on the left and right ports, and they can be selected using this selector. If we click Enable All, it will power both weapons simultaneously. And uh, the last thing that we need to do to be able to actually fire the weapons is press the arm button. That's the master arm right there in the middle. With that now selected, uh, so basically with the capacitor on, the weapons all enabled, and the master arm on, if I pull my trigger, Railguns will fire. There we go. Okay, so that's that's basically how you get your, your ship ready for combat. Um, but uh, we actually have some more settings that we can play around with. If I go to the hard mounted display here and I click on weapons, we have a whole series of controls that allow us to uh, further uh, kind of set up our weapons. So uh, we have power switches. Uh, we can actually select uh, the right or the left railgun, and using this button here, we can actually disable power to one particular railgun at a time. We also have the ability to enable or disable the thermal cutoff, which will allow us to fire the weapon even if it's in an overheated state. That's actually rather dangerous. Uh, the weapons can explode. Uh, we can also change our convergence modes. We can have manual convergence of the weapons or automatic. Um, I'm going to leave that on automatic just now. And we can also change the fire link mode. So we can have sequenced, where it will fire one then the other. We can have linked mode, where, the, where they will fire simultaneously. We have when able, which will basically fire them in sequence, but it, it will miss weapons that are not uh, ready to fire. And selected means it will only fire the currently selected weapon. I'm going to leave it in selected mode just now, and I'm going to select the right hand weapon only. And I'm going to demonstrate something just now. Right, uh, first I'm going to find a, uh, something that we can reference. Here we go. That's actually our weapons training uh, satellite over there. I'm going to put my uh, flight path or kind of bore sight indicator over that just now. Now if I start firing off shots on one gun only, and note that I actually have my autopilot modes turned off right now. Oops. Here we go. NAS uh, autopilot modes are off. If I hold my trigger down, you're going to see that um, the ship will actually start to rotate in the direction of the weapon that I'm firing. Uh, this is because for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. You know, we're firing a, a slug out there into space, uh, that in turn pushes our ship backwards and rotates it in that direction. I could actually jump back into my hard mounted display, I could select the other weapon, left hand one only, fire that, and actually very slowly I could start to rotate myself back in the other direction. Let's give that a bit of time to take effect. And if we watch that just now we should see that, yes, ever so slowly we are rotating to the left now. Now, of course, a lot of the time in combat, we're going to have our autopilot hold modes engaged, uh, and that's going to counteract the uh, the effect of firing one weapon at a time anyway. Uh, so if I 
turn on our three hold modes and hit autopilot allow. That's going to stabilize us at the current position. And if I just fire one weapon only, uh, now that would normally cause us to rotate to the right. Uh, and we should now find that that's not actually going to happen. Ship is holding completely steady. You'll notice actually that station is moving off to the left very slightly, but that's actually a function of its orbit. Um, the ship, if you look at the uh, the moon in relation to the moon, we are not rotating at all. Okay, so next I'm going to demonstrate the sensors because we have this uh, weapons training platform up ahead. We're going to make our way over to that and we're going to use it to demonstrate uh, how to aim the weapons. So if I switch to my sensors page just now, and I'm just going to change the scale so I can see that ship a little bit better. Currently we are in a top top down view mode. Uh, if I switch that to nose mode, it will actually display the station right there in the middle because we're currently pointed at it. If I rotate my ship a little bit, you will see the icon moves. Now uh, in nose mode, the icon will be large when it's something that's in front of you. If I rotate around so it's behind me, it will appear as a small icon and then it becomes a big one again once it's back in the kind of forward hemisphere. So I'm going to leave that in front of me just now. I'm going to switch back to the top down mode because actually I find that a little bit easier to work with. There we are. Now if I select it I will get a green bracket around it and then if I actually hit the little option here that says try lock that's going to result in me locking up the station. So I now get an exact range and a closure rate uh, and I also get my gun sight. Those uh, circles that are being displayed are the uh, lead computed gun sight. So uh, we're going to make our way towards this training station just using our translational thrusters. We're going to bring ourselves up to 300 meters. Doki, and just wait for that to that uh, range to decrease a bit. So yes, we're going to get to 300 meters, and we're going to have uh, have a go at hitting some of the targets that will be displayed on this holographic weapons training satellite. Now, the the satellite will appear as a sort of um, as a sort of disc, actually, and inside the disc is projected an image. In this case, it's just a kind of ghostly uh, blue uh, circle with circular targets displayed within. Now the entire projection is capable of changing colour uh, and registering hits. What it will do is it will flash orange if we miss the target and it will flash green if we hit the target. Uh, it will also display little red X's wherever our shots actually pass through the holographic image. Okay we're starting to get a bit closer now so I'm going to reduce my closure rate and I want to get us stabilised at about 300 metres. There we go, we can hear our proximity pinger now. in range. Let's bring that speed down a bit now. And there we have it. 300 meters. Okay, so I'm going to try and stabilize us. Actually, I didn't do too bad a job there. I'm going to try and stabilize us there. I'm going to turn on cold gas mode just so I can get a slightly uh, more accurate position. There we go. Now, you should see, if we take a kind of closer look, that there is a, a little circle in the middle uh, that's being displayed as a, a target. Now that's a, a four meter target. Yeah, I'm just going to bring our weapons to bear on it. And if we fire through fire through the target just now, you'll see that it flashes orange because we're missing and it displays little red X's on the uh, holog oh, there we go on the holographic uh, image. I actually got a hit there. And as I get a hit, it shifts the target to a new location. There we go. Green. And green. There we go. Okay, so, not doing too badly. There we go. And what I'll do, actually, I'm going to jump back to the weapons page very quickly 
I'm going to switch my convergence to manual and set set my convergence to a slightly higher value so you can see <laughs> what's what it's possible to achieve that's obviously a bit too much right? <laughs> or a lot too much let's set that down to five no 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 that's still far too much down to three uh, <laughs> that's almost <laughs> not quite uh, two maybe just one there we go. That actually, that gets it nice and tight. Okay. So yeah, I think that uh, that makes for a fairly good demonstration of the rail guns, uh, and that's really all that there is to it at the present time. There will be other weapons implemented in the Fire Shark at a later date, but uh, I think the the rail guns for now are plenty fun. I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you for watching.